Hi, I'm attorney Dave Maldonado, a seasoned litigator with over a decade of experience in Montana. Have you been injured in a car accident? If so, remember insurance companies want to give you as little money as possible. There's a reason why they have the biggest buildings in the largest cities. Don't let big insurance bully you. Visit BigSkyDefender.com today to see how I can help you get fair compensation for your injuries. The consultation's free and the fight's real. Man, that was awesome. I don't even know what else to say. Absolutely awesome. So proud of these guys. Uh, they bought into each other. They took ownership of the team. Uh, our leaders, like, like I said a couple weeks ago, like players win games in March. Players make the plays in March. And these guys have been tremendous, uh, especially with having a bullseye on our back all year after winning it last year. And these guys infusing the three transfers that we had and developing and enhancing our culture. Uh, all the credit to these guys. You know, they know, what, they know what the standard is. They know what my standard is. And they accept it. And they work for it. And it's my job to, it's my job to give a damn every day and to make sure they know what is expected every day. And when you talk about bringing your lunch play on hard hat to work, these two guys beside me and, and the team that they have, I mean, that's, that's what we're about. You know, that's how we're built. And uh, we do it the right way. You know, we hold these guys accountable and they accept it. And you can just, you see the growth on and off the floor with these guys and just super proud. You know, they, they deserve it. You know, I know a lot of teams deserve it, but like this, I know, like, especially what these two have been through, even personally, uh, you know, in their, their path leading to Montana State and a lot of our guys in our locker room, but like, they deserve it. And they don't just deserve this, they deserve more. And uh, just really proud of them. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up to any questions you guys may have for our two players. <coughs> I know I said nothing about the game. I apologize. <laughs> Rick Juan, hey, Coulter, New Orleans, Skyline Sports. What's your favorite part about that trophy you got sitting next to you? That I won it with my team, huh? So well, this, I didn't do this by myself. This is this is with the team. So I, you know, I'm I'm just happy I, I was able to win another ring and you know do it with my best friend here, you know Jabril, and you know one of my favorite coaches of all time, Coach Sprink. So, you know, it just means more than you know more than more than words, really. And Jabril, we talked a couple of days ago about just how challenging it was to to run it back and chase the second straight championship. Now that you got it done, I mean, what did it take and how does it feel? Um, it, I mean, it took everything. Um, you know. We've been slaving since June. Guys running 55s, 88s, 44s, and you know, doing something that's never been done before is a feeling that you can't even speak of. You know, doing it with your best guys, your best friends, with this amazing coach, telling me that you know this is gonna come, and now seeing it come to life is just you know, it's it's mesmerizing, honestly. Rick, what was the hardest part of this journey, and what was the most gratifying part of this journey? The hardest part, um, I was just saying, keeping uh, like chipping away at everything. You know, there's times where we we should have lost games, but there's like we just pulled it out. You know, we figure we figure out ways to win, and even last year, you know, we figure out ways to win, and you know, that's just, that's the culture that we have. And I'll say that's one of the hardest things is maintaining that throughout the whole year, throughout the whole season. And the best part is now. You know, you, you stress and you work and you put your heart, blood, sweat, and tears every single day into this game. And, you know, we do it for this, we do it for the net, and we do it for the trophy, and we do it for each other. Uh, question for both of you guys. I was talking with Darius down on the floor uh, afterward just now, and he gave a quick shout-out to guys like Carter and Alex and, mm -hmm. and Luca and, and Nick, and guys who really help with your scouts, you know, throughout you know, e each and every week. I imagine you have a, a similar sentiment of how important they are to this team, even if they don't always show up on the final piece of paper that we're handed after games. Mm -hmm. How how vital are their presences to what you guys have just accomplished? Man, more than you can know. Like, don't forget Jeb Miller, man. Jeb Miller is a bucket. Sorry, Jeb. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'd be telling, I'm like, dude, slow down, bro. You <laughs> you be doing too much, man. So yeah, I, you know, we love them boys. You know, we wouldn't be here without them, and they make us better every single day, and they we make them better every single day. So. Ashley Washburn, MTN Sports. Uh, Coach, when we talked last week, we talked about Jabril Bello and just the legacy that he was going to leave with Montana State and that there will never be another Jabril Bello, and it was important <coughs> to be able to get this win. How does it feel, you know, winning this for Jabril? Absolutely awesome. Um, you know, 
the four years he's put in, it's been hard. I mean, it's been a grind. Like he 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 came in and he believed when there there wasn't much in our program, and uh, for him to continue to believe in him to to lead every day, you know, we have shirts that say mindset, you know, with the Montana State M on them, and it came from a team meeting where Jabril, that's all he talked about. He was like, our mindset has to be this on the court. Our mindset has to be this off the court, in the classroom. And so I'd, I'd put it in big letters in our locker room if you've ever been in there. You know, it says mindset, and we make shirts of it. And, uh, but that's who he is. Like, he, he has that mindset to dominate every aspect of his life. And he's the most unselfish superstar, I can tell you, in this league. That's probably played in this league. To, to do the stuff that he's done, and he's just all about his teammates all the time, doesn't care if he scores. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And just I've been to his house in, in London, and I've, I've been with his family, and I know how much this means to them, and I know what he's been through. And not a lot of people can do what he's been through and get to where he is right now and have that character. And so super proud of him. Any more questions for our players? I mean, just general thoughts from you, Jabril. I mean, you're going dancing again, so well, how does it feel? I'm excited, you know. You know, last year I was injured, and um, I don't think I get I got to experience it or enjoy it as much as I really wanted to, you know, being hurt. So I'm excited, you know. I get to go with my, my best friends, my, my brothers, man, like, I mean, we get to live it up, honestly. You know, I, I got two on the way. I got another ring coming. You know, I'm, 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 I'm just lit, man, right now, man. <laughs> Thank 52 you. wins in the last two years. I just I got a text of that earlier today. 52 wins that these guys have been a part of. That's that's incredible. That, that's incredible at our level. Thank you both. We'll now open up to any questions you guys have for Coach. Uh, Danny, I mean, back-to-back -back wins, but it's in a, in a two championship wins in two different uh, bracket formats. You know, coming into this one, you know, in a brand new. Uh, format, you know, what were the differences like, and sort of how did you sort of have to manage, you know, uh, time-wise, time management, practice, rest, all that. How was that different from last year and this year? Uh, I mean, not too much different. You know, I mean, three games in four days instead of three and three. I mean, it did help, but I mean, with our league this year, I was scared to death. You know, I mean, look at NAU. I mean, they were the what a nine seed. I mean, and they could have very easily won. 10 games in the regular season. You know, I mean, they had some heartbreaking losses. Uh, so I, I was worried, you know, I mean, Northern Colorado first game, I mean, they had three seniors that can go for 30 on you. And so like, you know, our guys, I mean, the best thing about our program, like we respect everybody. Like, I, and I feel like we play the right way. We, we act the right way. And, uh, you know, and it, that's why they continue to, to stack wins. And now you get to keep going dancing. The past few years, Big Sky rep has been around the 14 seed. Last year you played Texas Tech. Knowing what you, how that game went and what experience that was, what do you think you're going to need to do to prepare differently going against one of the best teams in the country? Yeah, I mean, we'll prepare like we, we do for any other game. You know, we're, we're not going to change things up. We're going to do things the way we do them. And, uh, I mean, last year we ran into a buzzsaw. I mean, Texas Tech was one of the best defensive teams in the past 10 years in all of Division One. And they shot the ball extremely well that day, which they hadn't done up to that point. And, uh, you know, and it was tough. You know, our two best players last year, X and Jabril, and it's not an excuse, but they both had surgery the day after Texas Tech game. You know, Xavier played on a broken foot, and Jabril was half speed. You know, not saying it would have changed anything in the game, but it would have helped us a little bit. Um, so we're not going to change. We're going we're to do and prepare the way we do. Our guys trust and believe in that. Mm -hmm. Danny, given the late start and you know how late you've all played yesterday, how long you played yesterday, uh, were you afraid of any kind of you know, sluggishness coming into this game today? And how wary did you have to be of NAU always being within striking distance? Yeah, well, they just kept making threes like that. They had been making 10, 11 threes, you know, the last I think five games, and to hold them to seven was a tremendous credit to our guys. Um, but they, you know. I wasn't too worried because I knew our leadership. I was worried. I wanted to see where we were at in the second half with our stamina and kind of Darius because he's been playing a ton of minutes and Jabril played 44 or something yesterday. So I wanted to keep a close eye on that. Um, but when it's winning time and you're playing for a championship, you know, you don't get tired. 
I know you had shirts in the preseason also, if you want to talk about shirt slogans, that said no one cares. Yeah. No one cares that you won last year. Uh, maybe no one cares that you won you know, two in a row by the time next season yep. starts. But to have they don't, one. don't. Bobcat Nation does and, and our community does. That's about it. But, but to have two in a row now, yep. um, some people have to care and, and they have to take notice. What has Montana State, you know, really big picture, accomplished in the last two, three years? Yeah, you know, I think, I mean, I think we've got, you know, the respect of the college basketball landscape, you know, a little bit. I mean, it's really hard for us to find games. You know, not a lot of people want to play us right now. And, you know, I take that as a sign of respect. We still have to play games, you know, and I take credit for, you know, like Arizona played us. Like, yeah, it's a hard game, but that's what you sign up for when you come to Montana State and you play Division One basketball. You want to compete against those teams. And I think playing those type of games like at Oregon, at Grand Canyon, you know, the tournament in Montreal was three tremendous mid-major teams. And it all was built to build us for March, you know, to build for these three days. You know, and we talk about, like, I talk a lot about, and I don't shy away from it, like, hey, there's 47 days till championship night. There's 23 days. And I remind these guys every time because I want them thinking, I want them thinking big picture too. We're going to get better today, but I want them thinking about this day, 9.30 p.m., you know, I sent them, I had it in my calendar on my phone, and I'd send them screenshots every time it popped up on my phone, you know, to remind them because, you know, Great even said it last night, like, our big, you got to be there before you get there. You know, you have to be, you have to see yourself holding that net, the graffiti coming down before it happens. And you have to, you have to, like, truly believe that. And, you know, it helps when you have, you know, some high character guys that really believe in the same vision that you do. You take a look at this stat sheet, and, you know, it doesn't always fit, paint a full picture, and I think of Robert Ford and just kind yeah. of the defensive performance he had tonight. Uh, really kind of gave a hard time to Jalen Cohn. How did you think he did just the overall defensive performance and holding him to only five points in that he was first awesome. half? He was awesome. You know, obviously Jalen Cohn's a terrific player, and, you know, he's going to score. He's going to get shots. He's so fast and quick. But Rob, Rob was tremendous. You know, not just this game. You know, the last month he's been, he's been phenomenal and changed some games defensively. You see him just in there scrapping and getting loose balls and bloody in his face and his lip, and he just comes to timeouts. He's looking at me. I'm like, man, clean your face, you know. But that's just who he is, you know. He's like, he's got that dog in him, you know, and he just he loves to compete. Coach, if we go back to your maybe your introductory <laughs> press conference, and if I would have told you then that this is what would have happened in your first four years, you know, three three tournaments, three you know, going to the championship and two, like what what do you think you would have said? I mean, I, being 100% honest, I don't know if I, I told <coughs> Leon. It was like <coughs> I knew we were going to be good, and I knew we'd win a championship. To say we'd win two in the first four years, I don't know. Especially we've only had three tournaments. The first year we got canceled, and I, I really believe we're built to be a good tournament team. And uh, But, you know, I believe in my ability, and I believe in my players and the staff and, and you know, I don't even. I think I'll, this will be my sixth or seventh NCAA tournament, and I've learned under some great mentors. You know, starting with my parents, but Coach Braswell, Diedrich Taylor, guys like that, where I saw the work that they did, and I saw how our teams came together, and the teams that played for championships. Like I took note of what those teams did, and so I knew when I got the job what we had to do to get our program to that point. Dane, doing this at your alma mater, I mean, this is now, I mean, I think inarguably the greatest run in Montana State basketball history. So uh, has, awesome. that, has that sunk into you? And what, I mean, what does that mean <laughs> it, to be the it guy? It hasn't yet. It hasn't yet, but it's uh, – and I don't know if it will sink in for a long time because I just – like I tell our guys, like, I'm just trying to get better tomorrow, you know. And I, it's probably after midnight now. I don't know what it is, but, like, our slogan, rent's due tomorrow, you know, like – we have another game to play, too. We're going to celebrate this, and we're going to enjoy this. And I'll probably, instead of just one night, we'll probably enjoy this for a couple nights. But then we gotta, we got to work. You know, like, we got to continue to try and take a next step. we got to try and win a game in the tournament. You know, I don't know when the last time a team won a game from our league in the tournament, but somebody's going to do it. Why not be us? I mean, on that note, how do you turn the page? And, uh, how do you get a team ready? I know you're going to enjoy it for a minute, but uh, how do you, I mean, how much do you think the experience from last year helps you? It'll help, and, and these guys will tell you I got I got ways to humble them, and uh, you know we got you know 
I know how to humble these guys and get them back on track and uh, and keep them hungry, you know. And and I think the experience last year will help us, you know, because I think I think we're a little disappointed with kind of how we played last year. And uh, you know, whoever we draw is going to be an unbelievable team, but we got to go. We got to go fight and, and do what we do. Danny, I know you've already addressed the the new format of this season, um, but last year the tournament ends much later in Championship Week. Now you have a couple of days even just to awesome. get to Selection Sunday, and then you have almost essentially a full week before that first game. How much do you expect that extra time to be beneficial to your team, given that you're a little bit healthier this year? Yeah, I, I think it'll be huge. You know, plus our guys don't have to sit on a bus for eight hours and go right to Selection Sunday, you know? And so we get to enjoy it for a couple of days and, and, uh, and then get back in the gym. But, you know, I like the new format of, you know, get I'm, I, it's nice to play on Saturday night too because I know – a lot more people from Bozeman would probably be able to make it on a weekend, but we still had an unbelievable turnout that sparked us, and and we'll enjoy those couple extra days off. I know that. Coach, uh, are you able to really? I know Coulter. I know he mentioned it about already about kind of soak, soaking this in, but I mean, just where you've come from, and and you personally. What does this mean to you, not just winning this championship, but to be able to lead these young men and, and do it year in and year out and grow these guys and, and, and grow this brand for this school? What does it yep. mean to you personally to be, to be a part of that? I mean, it means everything. You know, it really does. It, uh, to be able to have the influence that we can as coaches and leaders on the players, like that's, that's, that's more important than these championships, to be honest. And... You know, to see these guys graduate and to see Jabril next year and when he goes and he's successful in whatever he does, like that's, that's why you take jobs and positions like this. Yeah, it's to coach him hard and get him better in basketball and all that, but it's also to, you know, even guys that I've had to transfer. You know, we had a kid, Kellen Tynes, who, I mean, I loved the kid to death. You know, Borja Fernandez, they're texting me, like Borja wanted to come to Boise. You know, and these are kids that transferred out of our program. But... They knew they were loved, and they know we still love them. Like, once you come in, you're part of it for life. And, you know, I enjoy calling Kellen Tynes when he gets player of the week at Maine, you know. And, you know, B.J. Shabazz, who was first team at MSU Billings, like, it's, it's not just what, during their time at MSU. It's way beyond that. And, you know, I mentioned the other night uh, about Joseph Frazier, who passed away tonight, um, which is hard. But... You know, I know he's in a better place. And, you know, this championship's for you, Joseph. I know he's up in heaven celebrating tonight. And, uh, but he left an impact on me, and I hope I left an impact on him. Great. Thank you, everyone. J&B Restaurant Supply Team with Captain Darian White. Cola Bad Bear with Rebound. Miami. Madison Jackson assists. And your shooter from downtown, Leah Beatty. J and V Restaurant Supply. Savor the difference. Coach, when you're ready, we'll be giving your opening statement. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, Really proud. Really proud of our guys. I mean, the way they carry themselves. High character on off the court. And that's why we're standing here right now, we're sitting here. Because of the men in that locker room. Um, there were many times when we could have said, you know what, this, this, that's not our season. You know, we got beat by one, we got beat on the miracle buzzer beater, and, you know, they just came every day to, to my little family meeting room and just got It's my 25th year of coaching, and, you know, I don't rank the teams, but this is a very special group, and I just told them in the locker room, this will be the team, the 22-23 team, that will be part of that. Like, well, when, did, when did NAU basketball flip? for consistency, not just a special season. 
And you know what? Some of the naysayers will say, well, well, you still finished ninth, but they don't know what's going on inside our locker room on our campus and uh, just the character of our guys. And to make this run, um, you know, it says everything about them. I, I think, you know, the biggest compliment I've ever gotten coaching is that I love my players and there's no different today. It's really hard to sit up here. Knowing we didn't reach our final goal with uh, Xavier Fuller, who I've known since he's a little kid with his goggles on. You know, and Jalen Cohn, who, who took a chance in our program coming from the ACC and Virginia Tech. And you know what? If he comes back, he'll break every scoring record uh, at NAU and, you know, hopefully hang a banner. But the other thing I want to say is uh, Nick Maines. Uh, Nick Maines, somebody that if you talk about our program, starts there. And when we start hanging banners up at the Walk Up Sky Dome, these guys, you know, and Xavier Fuller, Keith Heyman, Nick Maines, there will be a big reason for that. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up to any questions you guys have for our players. Xavier, that was an amazing run. Uh, what was it like to go through it, and uh, how disappointed is it for it to end? Yeah, I mean, I think we, you know, shocked the world, honestly, just knowing, you know, what our seed was. And, um, you know, just seeing my guys every day and, and seeing Coach every day, it's, that's – that was the brightness of my day every day. So, you know, I going to battle with them was the best thing I've ever been a part of in my collegiate career, and I'll, I'll, I'm grateful for that. And Jalen, you had such a great game the other night. You had a good game tonight again. But, I mean, did Montana State do anything to limit you, or what did you think of just their defensive performance? Uh, you know, Montana State is a great team, and they were a great uh, defensive team. I think Darius Brown, uh, defensive player of the year, uh, all those guys are aggressive and try to deny and face guard me, but I think they did a good job, and, um, you know, they have a great coaching staff. So, Guys, Andrew Allen, Skyline Sports. Uh, Jalen, you guys closed to within five multiple times in the second half. You guys made a bunch of runs. You kept it close the, the entire time. Uh, just why weren't you able to get over the hump in the second half there? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you can score the ball as good as you want, but it's all about stops. And uh, we just struggled to, you know, get those stops and then, you know, convert it on the other end to to, to get that lead within five. And, uh, you know, tonight just wasn't our night and uh, time ran out on us. But uh, I think we're gonna, we all will learn from this. Xavier, you were brought in here to be sort of that, that, that guy on defense, especially on the perimeter. And I think that – that uh, definitely showed this season and in, in the tournament. Just going up a team against a team like this that's known for for their size and physicality. Just what differences did you see against them than maybe the other teams? Oh uh, well, the, yeah. I mean, just like today, Battle was a good player and stuff like that. So I think he, uh, you know, for for me, I think I think I I did a uh, okay job and credit to my teammates for helping me. But you know, he's a good player, so you got to give him credit where it's due. Um, like JC said, it, it came down to just getting stops and. You know, at the end, you know, we didn't do that. Time ran out on us, so uh, we'll learn. Yeah, we'll learn from this. And then to, to, to both you guys, I mean, to go through the, the, the teams that you did, Idaho, a team that's, you know, a home state, uh, both the Montana schools, Eastern Washington, you know, schools that are nearby here, just what was it like from a, a, a arena and a fan atmosphere knowing that, you know, most of the fans in here were, were more than likely cheering for the other team? Uh, you know, it was good. It was fun. You like playing in those atmosphere and those those hostile crowds. And um, we knew it was going to be like that from the first game, you know, playing uh, University of Idaho, the Vandals, and, um, and like the Montanas. They always show up great with their crowds. But we knew it was going to be fun and exciting. And, and those are the moments you live for. Jalen, moving forward with this program, what – I don't want to flip the script too early, but – Going into next year, what's going to be the mindset? Uh, you know, it's just get back to where we are now. Um, most people were talking about Cinderella run and all this and that, but the people on the inside of the locker room knew every game going into this tournament that we could win. Uh, the first game, Idaho, uh, we got them by 20 at their place. Then the next game, Eastern Washington had them by five or six in under two minutes at our place. And then uh, Montana had them 
with like a minute left, we were up at their place and beat them at our place. And then coming into Montana State, we were up by one with 30 seconds left. And all games we couldn't finish, but um, we knew we could win. So coming into this tournament, we knew that we were a good team. And just, you know, next year learning from and just grow, well, mainly just growing from where we are now. Um, I think we really pulled some things together here at the end, come tournament time, just coming together, staying connected, and learning how to finish games. And it showed. X, you know, obviously this is it, but going forward with the, it, from this program's perspective, how do you see it advancing as somebody who's spent years with, in college basketball with multiple different programs? Yeah, no, there's no, nothing but positive vibes. I mean, I think, like Jason, uh, JC said, like, we'll, I think they'll be back, you know, uh, right back where we left off. Um, I think Coach does a great job with, you know, recruits and getting the teams connected and everything. Everyone in that locker room loves each other and uh, willing to play for one another, dive on the loose ball. So, I mean, I mean nothing but good vibes, and I think we'll, we'll, they'll be back. No. Thank you both. We'll now open up to any questions you guys have for Coach. Yeah, yeah, Coach, much, just must be a lot of emotions right now, uh, the, the pain of coming so close, but also just the accomplishment of what you guys did this week. Which of those is winning out for you right now? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's my 25th year of coaching, and, and I used to be way more emotional in moments like this, but you know, as you get older and you stay connected to your players, um, you know, Nick Maines and Xavier Fuller, are two seniors, we'll stay connected for the rest of our lives. So that's why, you know, we showed some emotion in the locker room. And, but that, that's what's winning over right now is that we didn't get the job done. Uh, it was an incredible run. I think the program's in a good spot moving forward with everything. And, uh, you know, those guys will always be really important for us. Nick Maines played the most games ever. Xavier Fuller comes for one season and, you know, mission accomplished to get here to this championship game. And, but, you know, we're all competitors and, you know, the ifs and buts will be the overwhelming thought for several weeks and months going into our next season. Montana State, one of the most physical, one of the biggest teams in the league. Uh, you guys, I thought, matched that really well today, going for loose balls on the boards. Uh, did you like that effort from your team today? Oh, no, our effort, we talk about ETA now. ETA, meaning effort, toughness, attitude. I mean, nothing but credit to our guys. You know, we didn't back down. And, you know, the one thing that we recruit to is a mindset. And there's not one guy in that locker room who thought we were Cinderella or didn't think we could win that game tonight. So, you know, you, you got to take your hat off. You know, maybe I should have said that in my opening statement with, with Danny Sprinkle. He does a great job coaching. You know, that says enough. And how his teams play and how they respect the opponent and they compete legitly and no shenanigans or anything like that. All credit to Montana State. To win back-to-backs really hard to do, and, and they've done it, and he's really managed his roster really well in his several years as a head coach at Montana State. So respect that program. Like no other program in our league. And um, So, you know, you take your hat off to them and you know, try, to, try to match you know, their personnel and their intensity and keep getting better. I mean, on that note, it's been a long time. I, th- I think only twice since this league went to a neutral site tournament that somebody's repeated what makes them so tough. I mean, why, why were they able to do it, in your opinion? Yeah, well, I, well, I think, you know, coaching staff-wise, you know, the administration is great at Montana State. You go play in their building, it's a great home court advantage. But then you got to give the players a credit. you got a, a, a Bello and a Asabar, and then you get a nice recru- – a guy coming in as a Brown a transfer in Ford, and then you know battles coming from University of Washington. And think about that—he was six man in the league last year, and um, you know he was up there as one of the best players in the league. And you know someone like a, some a loyal kid like Bello to come back. You get those key pieces to be there, and then you got Patterson who can knock down threes when he needs to. And, and I guess he's not a problem in the locker room ever. So this their depth is really good, and they, you know they're a little bit older in some spots, but. Um, Give credit to them. That, that's a good team. Their size is the biggest difference in the league when you go against them. Their size and their physicality is it's awesome to play against. And Raekwon Battle, what makes him such a tough cover? Well, I think that he, he's very confident with his scoring ability. He can elevate over everybody, an athlete like no other in our league. He can score the ball at all three levels, knocks down free throws, and he can guard you pretty dang well too. So just all-around player. Um, 
And, you know, he'll do really well whenever he leaves Montana State as far as the professional level. Coach, I mean, this game was pretty tight for the entirety of the game. Yeah. Um, you know, they got off to a quick start. I think it was 6-0. You guys started 107 from the floor, you know. Uh, aside from that, what else did you think you really needed to do to sort of get over that hump, especially when, you know, like we said, you got as close to, to five there near the end? You well, know, I thought Jalen did a good job answering that. You know, we started out one for seven. I think at halftime, I can't remember exactly what we were at halftime, but if you took the seven, first seven shots at halftime away, we were shooting 50%. So that wasn't, that wasn't a topic at halftime. The topic was getting stops and to get in those humps, you know, to get within six and seven and, you know, a couple of shots to get to four. You just got to get stops. You have to be able to go on, you know, maybe get a three-possession stretch where they don't score and we score maybe twice and put a little game pressure on them. And we did a good job putting game pressure on them, but we just couldn't get those consistent stops. Yeah, well, I, I think we got to be in a position to put uh, Carson Tout in a better position, maybe get him to a four, uh, you know, offensively and defensively. Carson Tout will fight with anybody. Uh, you know, when you play these games, that's why you play in Arizona State and Michigan State and Texas, because you want to play those guys and at least get in a fist fight in an NCAA tournament with them on a neutral court. So, you know, we got to get a, a legit big guy in on for us. And, you know, our guards, hopefully, we're developing within house. I think uh, Jack Wistersell can come in and, and be the next Nick Mains in our program. And, uh, you know, we have some guards, we call them the white polos, but we got some really good players. We only have 10 guys on our bench because. We have freshmen. We would never want to burn our eligibility. So we got some players in-house with our player development that we're very positive and encouraged about. Coach Oakland Fort took a huge step forward this tournament. What do you have to say about what you saw from the freshmen in Boise? Yeah, well, in Boise, you know, that's something that Oakland, he's been consistent all year. And sometimes his stats don't see that. He's a freshman playing a lot of minutes. And in this league, a lot of freshmen don't play in this league. I mean, you couldn't even name a first and second team if you really got down to it. And, you know, I think Oakland has built that conference, made big shots. He made a three tonight, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he had two threes. Uh, and one of them that he missed, he's, he's wide open. So, But his consistency and his, as I mentioned at the beginning when I was getting a little emotional, just the way they carried themselves. Like, and when you're an eight like that and motivated and you take care of yourself, the sky's the limit for you. And, you know, those two freshmen at Jack Wistel and Oakland Fort, I mean, they got very bright futures here in this league and at NAU. It feels a little like the two, the men and women's teams at NAU, this, at least this tournament, have kind of become linked. You guys have been probably the biggest supporters of each other at the tournament. Last year, they went on a little bit of a Cinderella run, and I know you don't like to call this run for you guys. Cinderella, yeah, no, but I know what you're saying. But is what they did last year and then what, how they transitioned that momentum into this year, is that a little bit of a a sign of confidence for you guys, something that you guys can take away from it anyway? Yeah. Well, hey, I'm a loyalist, so, like, I don't care if our golf team's playing or our women's basketball team's playing. Like, we want any of you to win. In the fall, we, we go to tailgates, support our football team. The more people that you win and you be around, and our student-athletes are hanging out those winners, and um, so we root for each other. And, yeah, you know, I mentioned the other night that it's inspiration that we can do that. You know, I've been part of Arizona sports for 24 to 25 years and as a coach and one year as in Fort Scott, Kansas. But I'll tell you what, Arizona is very fertile for uh, basketball players in Southern California and some outliers where we can get it done consistently at every sport at NAU. And so for the women's basketball team, like we asked the guys, you want to come to the game? And without hesitation, they wanted to come to the game. And it's not a show, it's legit. Um, we're rooting for everybody at NAU. Thank you, Coach. Okay, guys, thank with you. Captain Darian White. Cola Bad Bear with rebound. Madison Jackson assists. And your shooter from downtown, Leah Beattie. JV Restaurant Supply. Savor the difference.